last time on Dragon Ball Z. Hey, I'm kind of losing the pain. Cool oh, green screen stuff. Ah! Ow. Get the nerve. Conclusion. I was kind of weird going into this because he doesn't really look like Batman. He looks like Nightwing or Spider Man trying to be Batman and still does. Like, he seemed kind of small, which isn't anything on him. I mean, I couldn't play Batman, but I could play the weird CW one. <laughs> But he played the role well, like he, he acted well in this in the role. That's I wasn't worried because of Twilight or anything. It was literally just like looking at him and thinking, that's not really a Batman. Which is the same with Christian Bale. Like I I did not see a Batman. I don't know what it was. Maybe just give me a giant meat mountain. Even though Batman's only six two. Give him some steroids. <laughs> But yeah, he played the role well, like, with the suit and the atmosphere and everything he gave to the role. Probably, I, I think he's probably the best Batman so far. Batfleck, I think, is more built like a Batman. But he's wooden as fuck. Like me, when I talk. He's like an adequate actor, so... You definitely don't get him to play the contrasting personalities of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Well, not only that, like, Bruce Wayne is supposed to be an act. So you need an actor that can act like they're acting. I just don't think he's the one. Which brings me to a point. You don't see Battinson really do that. He kind of was just like, fuck being Bruce Wayne. And he also hated Alfred a lot. Uh, it seemed like Cat. And they eventually kind of seem to show that they care for each other. Well, he's the one that needed to show he cared after Alfred almost blew the fuck up. But like the Bruce Wayne side of things, this is supposed to be a trilogy, so they'll probably lean into it more in the later two movies but he's it's implied he's two years into his batman career and he's basically letting the company kind of just sit he's not doing anything with philanthropy he's not really doing any of the business stuff they they never seem to be able to get him into a meeting they try to like just show up at his house for meetings and whatnot or catch him at a funeral if anybody needed to see him and i think they're gonna get more into that with the other movies though if they don't then that's kind of annoying that this version of batman was like fuck it because that's a big part of his character, especially like the philanthropy part. He tries to fix Gotham as Bruce Wayne almost as much as he does as Batman by just donating tons of money and doing charitable organizations and stuff to try and help orphans and reform criminals, I guess. But I think they're going to get to that, so it's not even a valid plan. complaint. So just, just shut your fucking mouth, you dumb whore. Also, I should say Battinson is close to what how much... I liked Batman Begins Batman a lot. Like, Batman Begins was a great Batman movie. Dark Knight's a great movie, but he's an odd Batman. Dark Knight Rises is just dumb as fuck. And Michael Keaton is just kind of weird and wooden, and that Batman was overly gothic, ironically, somehow. But this Batman was a good balance. It was Batman. And played Batman well. But Batman Begins Batman is really close, because they, despite the voice, they were kind of getting pretty close to nailing him. I liked the armor, too. Like, it was, it was th fucking thick panther-looking weirdness, but still cool. <laughs> but he, he was getting close, even though Christian Bale is kind of a weird choice, physically. He still, like, towed the line, too, with, like, realism and what Batman could do with how he would just disappear and whatnot, using the gliding cape, all of that. Um, they were off to a good start, and then just kind of grounded things too much and made him too weird later on. And it kind of cleaned Gotham City up a lot, too. <laughs> they used Detroit a lot in Batman Begins, so it looked like Gotham. But then later on, it just looks like toned down Metropolis. But speaking of what Batman could do, because I did at some point, I want to see Batman do more martial arts. I don't know why nobody ever really does it. They choreograph some cool fights with him, sure. Not so much in the Dark Knight trilogy. The Crab Maga looks weird. And the camera zoomed in, so you can never see it. But in this movie, like, he's punching people and doing some cool stuff to, like, disarm people and then hit them with their own weapons, and he's grappling up and rolling under people to knock them over, and then just doing some cool stuff. And had a cool fight with Catwoman, and... yeah. But it kind of just looked like a guy swinging. I mean, he had some well-placed punches and timing and blocks and things, but I want to see him... 
Awesome do kung fu and Wing Chun kung fu and Hapkido jiu jitsu and stuff. He's supposed to know a lot of martial arts. You don't have to make him a fucking black belt in every martial art like DC decided he was. But just, you know, knowing the fundamentals of a bunch of them, that's very possible. To so do that, and then make him martial art fight people. You'd probably have a lot easier of a time beating people up if he didn't just swing on them. Although the fighting was still good. I just wanted to see more of it. There's like three fights with them and they last like maybe a minute or two. I mean, they wanted to put like that cool ass car chase with Penguin, which is amazing because Penguin like at one point tricks a semi into hitting a tanker, which then explodes and fucking almost destroys everything. But then Batman just like he gets lucky in a fucking a car mover that collapses and stops a bit. So he's able to just ramp up that over the explosion and through it. It was just like a cool, intense uh, chase, which started off with a camera kind of zoomed in, but they didn't keep it that way. So it worked out like you eventually get to see things better and better. And then that, and that explosion and he rams Penguin over fucking doesn't kill him, but really should have in that seem like when bail man was jumping on churches and running over cops and making them flip and shit but they were they're balancing all that with like detective stuff personal stuff cat woman stuff they did a good job of i just would have liked to see like maybe maybe make the movie 15 minutes longer fuck it you're almost at three hours anyway tack some more time in and have him just really fight a motherfucker punch the shit out of some some bitches he was martial arts. Which, while speaking of fights, like, the final fight with the Riddler followers, when he's got them, like, kind of trying to shoot a bunch of people and cleanse Gotham and help really change it. Cat, what are you doing? Like, that was the final confrontation, and it didn't really feel final. Like, I thought there was going to be more. I kept hearing there was a third act that didn't need to happen, so I thought he was at least going to do more detective work after it. Because I didn't really feel the third act dragging or anything. I didn't even know I was in it. Like, the movie did a good job of pacing and whatnot but like the final fight didn't feel very final because there's maybe like 10 people which i think they were trying to keep it realistic with him not being able to take everyone out but somehow it didn't feel like the end maybe because of how quickly it felt like it went it just didn't seem like it was the final fight but it was and i think it's because they wanted to focus on him saving people after the flooding and whatnot and becoming a beacon of hope which is kind of nice but also weird i mean he wants people to know he's out there so i guess he didn't really want to be a beacon of hope entirely he was just like now people can know someone's out here helping them because before he was just there was a point where a guy's like please don't hurt me and he just looks at him and then kind of doesn't really like seem to care about the guy being afraid of him but then at the end a woman like grabs his arm when the national guard's about to take her away to get medical attention she grabs him for like because she's afraid so it's like a nice contrast so he's kind of becoming the hope of the city I think they wanted to focus on that a bit. But give 15 more minutes a fight! Patch it, Nintendo, you fucks! This video is gonna be so fucking long, and I'm gonna take a month editing it. I haven't even finished editing this one podcast I did with a friend on our group channel about Spider-Man No Way Home. And that came out in December. Now, shut the fuck up, you're making it longer, idiot. So the final point really is the villains. Like they were, they were great in this. Riddler, I was worried about because it, it, it almost felt like the Doctor Doom thing, where like they made him look weird and more grounded. <laughs> I guess it wasn't really that much like Doom. <laughs> he had like a weird mask and shit. I don't know what the fuck my point was. This Riddler was just weird though because he was like wearing army surplus like rain gear or some shit with a creepy mask i thought they were gonna go saw killer with him but he ended up working out pretty well i mean you obviously you can't slap him in the green suit with question marks on it because that would look dumb he was definitely different from jim carrey's riddler he wasn't just trying to be the joker he was very dependent on people He was very dependent on his plans going through and he wanted batman to like work with him and he was trying to like change gotham it was using riddles to like fuck with people because puzzles and whatnot helped him cope with like the harsh reality of a terrible childhood he had like he was an orphan but he was living in complete poverty with children dying all around him and it was puzzles helped him escape that and then he was using them to fuck with people to offer comfort in their final moments but he wanted to like really just mess with them and uh, just clean up the city and he inspired a movement his own little QAnon movement behind him and he wanted he was he was obsessed with getting batman to join him that's why he like let himself get caught at the end to go to arkham because he, he like does this cool move where he tricks batman to bring out carmine falcone so that he can 
shoot him. He, he even, his riddle even says, like, bring him out into the light, bring the rat into the light, and that's... Kaz. And he literally meant bring him out under a street light so he can fucking shoot him. And he thought Batman was, like, working with him. So he was, he was deluded. He, 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 he knew, I think he knew he was tricking Batman, but he also assumed Batman was kind of in on it and going along with it. And when Batman was like, yeah, I'm not helping you out, he lost his mind. He did not appreciate that Batman was actually against him the whole time. And it seemed like he knew he was Bruce Wayne. And he kept saying his name and talking about him. And it looked like he was addressing Batman as Bruce Wayne. But then they hit you with a line afterwards and he's like, that's the one that we couldn't get, huh? Is the one that slid, slid his way out of all this. And then Batman's like, oh. Well, I pooped a little. Which reminds me, there's a whole, like, story where they're trying to find out who the hell the rat is that's working with the cops for some kind of corrupt deal to help them shut down another drug dealer. And they make you think, like, this this rat is working for the cops but most batman fans would like know that it's pretty corrupt in gotham they're probably working for the rat and that ends up being true the rat ends up being falcone which i said i would get back to this i'm glad i remember this too but the whole thing about bruce wayne and corruption was that his father kind of accidentally had a reporter killed because bruce's mom was in a mental institution a lot after her own mom killed her dad and herself and the father was running for mayor Thomas Wayne? And he didn't want anybody to know this. And I guess he had a good relationship with Falcone, even doing like open heart surgery. Or not open heart surgery, some kind of surgery. On the dining room table in the Wayne Manor to save him, like on short notice. And Thomas couldn't get the guy to stop talking about this story he tried to like buy his silence about martha and then when that didn't work he went to falcone and it was like hey i need you to scare the shit out of this guy but falcone was like yeah i'll take care of him i'll take care of him and he fucking killed him <laughs> and later told bruce it was because he was a corrupt maroney guy but riddler obviously only well riddler was still had a problem with it but he just took it to be that thomas had the guy killed and so he was gonna try and kill bruce for it just not really fair <laughs> like he just he wanted him to answer for the crimes and then mailed him a fucking package bomb without really giving him a chance and leaving a fireproof emblem for bat or em envelope for batman to find afterwards not realizing they're the same person also i guess the point was it was just kind of funny that they want you to think there's a informant working for cops and it's like surprise the cops work for him for the mob for carmine falcone and he was using them to get rid of his rival man he was also the one that probably had thomas wayne killed because thomas felt really bad about the reporter dying so he was trying to i'm rambling about the fucking story so much but there's a point. Uh, he had Thomas killed because Thomas was gonna tell on him about the reporter dying but it's just the whole the whole twist was funny because it's like no shit the cops work for the the, the criminals <laughs> it's what they do in gotham like they are the criminals they're part of the organization they're all paid off by the mob and it's not really a deal of the mob working for them it's all usually the other way around they're the ones that are like powerless and cowering below drug lords and shit there's a cool moment where there's a bunch of cops who help arrest falcone right before riddler claps his ass and gordon's like oh i guess not everyone works for you bitch it was a nice twist. I thought the cops were there to, like, escort Falcone away from Gordon. But he opens the door, they're all... There's, like, a ton of them standing there. Maybe, like, 50 or so. And they're all there to help arrest Falcone and try to clean up that shithole of a city. But back to the villains. <laughs> Penguin was cool. Uh, I actually forgot Colin Farrell was playing him. There's a lot of fucking makeup on there. And he, he does a great job being penguin he's falcone's right hand man but then steps up when falcone's being arrested uh he, he was like about to shoot him himself and but then riddler sniped him from far away and got that victory royale baby and it's implied penguin's gonna really be trying to take over for falcone now that he's dead riddler already talked about he ended up being really cool they had a nice nice balance between him being like smart and then also deluded and fucking obsessive and crazy he doesn't really have OCD about his puzzles, but he does like to use them, and he's obsessed with getting his, his way. Like, he was distraught and wailing when his plan failed, and he was not happy when Batman was, uh, rejecting his, his teamwork. Like, he assumed they were working together already, somehow, and was not happy to find out Batman was really just trying to stop him the whole time and had no interest in working with him. Like, it was... He, he really he pulled that off. It was, it was a good, well-written character. I liked it.
Hope he wraps his head in bandages and snipes Batman and almost kills him. That's actually... He could be Hush, because he's already sniping motherfuckers. And then the last one was Joker, which he seemed okay. He's in a cell next to Riddler in Arkham while Riddler's, like, freaking out about his plans failing at the end. And Joker's like, hey, Gotham loves a comeback story. And then he tells him a riddle. I think it was like, what has... What loses value as you have more of them? And he's like... A friend. And then that cheers him up. <laughs> and he and Joker starts like laughing and it, it's implied Riddler and Joker might be working together, which is cool. That's going to be cool if Joker's like using him or something, which is exactly what it's going to be. Joker doesn't befriend anybody, but like you could see like a chewed up looking face and some crazy hair. <laughs> and I think they're going to go for a really scarred looking Joker. They're like, I don't know how I feel about the guy playing him. We'll see when there's more of him, but he it didn't seem too great. I'm not trying to compare him to like Joaquin Phoenix or Heath Ledger. I'm really just thinking in general about Joker. I don't know. We'll see how he pulls off the crazy. Kind of lukewarm about it right now. But the movie was great. It was a good movie. It's probably one of the best Batman movies out there. I think I actually like it more than Begins. I don't know. It needs more action. More fight. Just add more time to it for fight. Don't replace any of what was in there for fight. Fix those fucking ears. Please. Nintendo, patch those ears, goddammit. Okay. Let me just... Good movie, go see it.